this is a digestive system model. Here are the lips. These are the teeth, specifically they're the incisors. Okay, here we have the hard palate up here separating the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. This is the tongue right here. Okay. And this right here is the lingual tonsil. This lingual tonsil right here will help to prevent entry of foreign invaders, microorganisms, things like that. Here's a palatine tonsil right here, also helping in that regard. And this right here is the pharyngeal tonsil back here. This is also known as the adenoid. Okay. Hard palate is right here, and then this is the soft palate. This would be the uvula right here. Here we have the epiglottis, and when food comes in here, it's going to pass by the epiglottis and go into the esophagus. That epiglottis is going to cover the opening in the larynx called the glottis to prevent food from going into the respiratory system. The food will end up in the esophagus, so this is the esophagus right here. You can see where it gets narrow right here. That's the lower esophageal sphincter. Okay. This portion of the stomach right here is the fundus. You can see how it comes up higher a little bit than the entrance of the esophagus to the stomach. Okay, that's the fundus. We're going to see the pyloric region right in here, and this would be the body of the stomach. There's a sphincter at the end of the pyloric region called the pyloric sphincter, and that's going to regulate the release of stomach contents into the duodenum. Okay. If I were to take this front plate off of the stomach, we would be able to see these ruga here. Okay. These are folds in the inner wall of the stomach that will allow the stomach to expand and take on more food. Okay. Here's another view of the pyloric sphincter, and this would be the pyloric region right here. And this is the duodenum here. Let me remove this piece here so that we can see the duodenum. Okay. Some of the structures we would be able to see here, we've got the uh, pancreatic duct right here going all the way down here from the pancreas. This orange structure right here is the pancreas. This would be an accessory pancreatic duct. Okay. There's going to be inside the duodenum a structure known as the hepatopancreatic ampulla that will allow passage of these secretions into the duodenum to help with digestion. Okay. Here you can see a little piece of one of the bile ducts, uh, specifically the common bile duct. There are three sections of the small intestine. We've got the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. This darker part right here would be the jejunum, and on this model the lighter part here would be the ileum. Here you can see where the ileum terminates and dumps the contents into the large intestine, or the colon. There's a little doorway or a valve between the ileum and the cecum right here called the ileocecal valve, or the ileocecal sphincter, that will control the emptying of the small intestine into the large intestine and will also help to prevent any microorganisms from coming from the large intestine going into the small intestine. Okay. However, there are structures in the ileum of the small intestine that will help to eradicate those microorganisms if they do get in there, and those structures are called Peyer's patches. This portion of the large intestine right here is the cecum. Okay. And then there's going to be this little tube right here called the appendix. This part of the colon is called the ascending colon. I'll put this part back on here so that we can see the transverse colon. Okay. There's a flexure right here known as the hepatic flexure because it's close to the liver. Transverse colon over here to the splenic flexure. Here's the spleen. 
down the descending colon right here and then we'll get a, an S-shaped turn called the sigmoid colon where this part of the large intestine goes around the ilium, the bone uh, known as the ilium or hip bone. Okay. And then it will go down into the rectum here and then the anus is the opening here. These structures right here would be the hostra. Okay, they're little pouches here, and when this tinea coli, this white muscle that goes the length of the large intestine, when that muscle contracts, it forms these pouches known as the hostra. This is going to help to move materials along the large intestine. Moving up to the liver here, this is the liver, and you can see the multiple lobes of the liver. Okay. This right here would be the round ligament or ligamentum teres. And here we can see a nice gallbladder. Okay, this would be the gallbladder right here. And then this from this line right here all the way down to where it meets these ducts. This right here this is the cystic duct. Okay. Right and left hepatic ducts form the common hepatic duct. That joins with the cystic duct from the gallbladder to form the common bile duct. And that common bile duct will bring bile into the duodenum. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhealth.com.